Howdy everyone and welcome to the Serial Geek TV YouTube channel. My name is James Etock and today we're going to take a look at Filmation's first work on Masters of the Universe. Specifically, the single piece of work that people often fail to realise Filmation actually worked on. In the fall of 1982, Filmation were the studio tasked by Mattel with producing the animated series promoting their Masters of the Universe toy line. However, the initial association between these two companies on this particular property actually occurred a year prior to the animated series. In 1981, Mattel created the Castle Grayskull playset to accompany the initial wave of Masters of the Universe action figures and vehicles that had been released. The playset, designed by the prolific Mark Taylor, was impressive to say the least. For Mattel, Castle Grayskull was an expensive item to produce, which was reflected in the price tag. Naturally, in order to sell the product to the public, Mattel set about filming an advert to promote Castle Grayskull. The advert featured a father talking to the audience about Castle Grayskull as his two sons played with the action figures around its base. In order to create even more interest in the product, Mattel commissioned Filmation to produce an animated short to accompany their forthcoming advert. Filmation had always been known for their limited animation, but during the late 70s the studio had produced the feature-length Flash Gordon, the greatest adventure of all animated movie. Unlike their previous efforts, the movie utilised beautifully smooth and consistently moving animation sequences, the likes of which the studio up until that point had yet to produce. The movie proved to Filmation's critics that, given the chance and the budget, the studio really could deliver animation worthy of the big screen. Filmation and Mattel were no strangers to one another, with Mattel producing toy lines based on Filmation's Tarzan and Flash Gordon cartoons. With the Mattel deal in place, Filmation president Lou Scheimer approached director Gwen Wetzler and gave her the task of directing the animation for the Castle Grayskull commercial. The problem was that at the time, Gwen and her staff were already knee-deep in production on a variety of Filmation shows. Not only that, but they had very little material to work with as the toy line was still in its infancy with very little story having been developed. They not only had to create the basic sequence of events for the commercial, but also craft the look of Eternia, the world in which Castle Grayskull and the forces of good and evil existed. Wetzler accepted the challenge, hired a few of her former Disney colleagues, Wetzler herself had worked at Disney for over 20 years, and alongside a few filmation artists that worked under Wetzler, they set about creating an animated commercial in an incredibly short space of time. The team worked after hours and often late into the night, knowing that time was not on their side. Within a few weeks, the animation, which was more beautiful than anything the company were producing at the time, was completed. The animated segment of the commercial has a fairly straightforward premise. Skeletor, Beastman and Merman have overthrown Castle Grayskull and He-Man, Battlecat, Man-at-Arms and Teela are tasked with removing them. The commercial successfully promotes the action figures and Castle Grayskull and also sparks one's imagination as this was the first time anyone at the time had seen these characters move, talk and interact. When one watches this commercial, it's hard to imagine that Filmation were the studio involved due to the sheer attention to detail. The accuracy to which the animators ensure that the characters resemble their toy counterparts is astounding. The heavily rendered illustration style throughout is beautiful, creating an animated short that is more like a moving illustration than simple cell animation. And with that, I shall break down the commercial as best I can. The commercial begins like many others that would follow it, by showing children playing with the Masters of the Universe action figures. The father explains that the Castle Grayskull playset comes with its own legend, something that can open up a child's imagination. The writing of this commercial is clearly promoting the majesty of what would become one of the most iconic playsets of all time. The animated segment begins with an almighty explosion accompanied by an even louder sound effect from Filmation's library. The way in which the explosion is rendered is very true to Filmation's uniquely detailed special effects which could be seen on a regular basis in the Flash Gordon series. As the smoke from the explosion fades away for the first time we get a good look at Castle Grayskull, which the artists have rendered to look like a perfect replica of the toys. We see an iridescent glow coming from within the mouth of the castle, as well as the eyes bathed in an ominous red glow. It is interesting to look at this rendering of Castle Grayskull and compare it to what Filmation created a year later during production of the actual series. The direction of this one shot immediately creates the impression that Castle Grayskull is a very important place. 
The gun turret on Castle Grayskull fires blast after blast at Man at Arms, who, on his sky sled, turns away from the castle. We see that Man at Arms is designed to look exactly like his action figure, with all of the minor detailing on his armour accurately transferred to animation. The level of detail on the sky sled itself is breathtaking, with the dragon pattern on the side of the ship replicated to perfection. The next shot reveals He-Man, Battle Cat and Teela looking rather heroic as Man at Arms lands the sky sled. Immediately we can see that, much like Man at Arms, the characters have been faithfully designed to look exactly like their toy counterparts. Even though the rendering of the characters is astoundingly detailed, each one of them moves throughout this scene with no static frames on show. The one criticism of this shot is that Battle Cat is a little on the small side. Man at Arms lands and warns his allies that Skeletor has captured Castle Greyskull. The close-up of He-Man talking demonstrates the fluidity of animation. The artists are clearly working from the voice track with He-Man animated to be constantly moving in order to emphasise his commanding dialogue. In a scene which features probably more frames, fluid animation and detail than a single episode of the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe series, the heroic warriors race into action to Grey Skull. Interestingly, it is Teela that leaps onto Battle Cat's saddle with He-Man deciding to lead the charge on foot. It is only logical that the first time we see Skeletor in animated form should be via an extreme close-up. The heavily rendered line art helps in emphasising his skeletal visage. A nice addition to all of Skeletor's animated movements is that his eyes are constantly glowing red. Skeletor orders Beastman and Merman to defeat the heroic warriors but that they must leave He-Man to him. We see an accurate representation of the Castle Grayskull throne as Skeletor rises to command his warriors. In this shot, as a testament to the sheer level of craftsmanship, both Beastman and Merman are constantly moving, reacting to every little piece of Skeletor's dialogue. And if you look carefully, you can see that Beastman's armour looks exactly like the action figure, even down to the loose straps that hang out of the back. The character design of Merman in the animated series was very different to the Mattel action figure. And we can see here, at this point, Filmation were more than happy to transfer Merman's action figure look to animation. He-Man crashes through the wall with his battle axe and shield in hand. The interesting thing about this is that in the series, He-Man's battle axe was not used, though a revised version does appear in the hands of Skeletor in the pilot episode, and his shield made a cameo appearance in the episode She-Demon of Phantos, wielded by Prince Adam. In this shot, it's fair to say that the resemblance of the weapons to their counterparts is far from perfect. One of the things about this commercial, which is evident in this and every other scene, is the use of shadows. Filmation would achieve shadows through the use of film exposure and masking, which were indicated and noted by the artist on the original pencil line art for the commercial. The process would no doubt have been a lengthy, time-consuming and expensive one. We are treated to yet another close-up of Skeletor with the heavily rendered line art once more emphasising his features. Much like the shadows throughout the entire commercial, the red glow emanating from Skeletor's eyes would have been a lengthy, time-consuming and expensive process. Skeletor quickly turns his throne and pushes a lever which opens up a trapdoor beneath He-Man. Of course, this shot showcases one of the action features of the Castle Grayskull playset. The reason that Filmation added a lever to the chair is due to the fact that a simple turn of the chair would not make sense visually. The animation of the chair turn is smooth and the sudden camera trucking towards Skeletor as he pushes the lever makes the shot a great deal more dramatic. This is one of my personal favourite images from the commercial as Skeletor looks wonderfully menacing sat upon the throne of Castle Grayskull. The next few shots of the commercial occur in quick succession to emphasise the fast-paced action of this scene. As the trapdoor gives way, Teela throws her staff across to He-Man who uses it to prevent his fall. The staff manages to carry He-Man's weight, thank goodness, as the most powerful man in the universe begins to position his body. He-Man then flips out of the trapdoor and onto his feet. Whew. One of the most interesting animation sequences in this short occurs as Skeletal leaps onto the sky sled. If the animation looks familiar to you, it should. Filmation would later simplify this sequence for the series and have it archived as part of their stock animation for whenever Skeletor needed to make a hasty getaway. Next, a low-angled shot shows He-Man strike a heroic pose as Teela and Man-at-Arms enter the frame. Man-at-Arms comments that Castle Grayskull is safe, but He-Man replies, nothing is safe while Skeletor is out there. A fantastic shot then shows Skeletor fly out of Castle Grayskull and directly towards the camera. We see Castle Grayskull illustrated from a low angle in this shot, an image we would become all too familiar with in the series. As the commercial comes to a close, we see the jawbridge close over the live action footage. The sound of the jawbridge closing is something that Filmation would utilise on the series. For those wondering, the pilot utilises the voice talents of Alan Oppenheimer and Linda Gary, who would go on to voice the very same characters in the series. 
In this short, Oppenheimer voices Man at Arms with aggression as the character had yet to be designated as the elder, softly spoken, adopted father of Teela. Oppenheimer's voice for Skeletor is by far the most interesting aspect, choosing to give him a deep, guttural voice, one that he would later use for Battle Cat, as opposed to the highly memorable upper register voice he would use in the series. Very well, He-Man, you've won this time, but I'll be back! The voice of He-Man is somewhat of a mystery. At times the voice carries certain inflections that indeed sound like John Irwin, the voice of He-Man in the series itself. However, upon careful inspection and intricate detective work by fellow Serial Geek contributor John Talper, it would appear that Burr Middleton was the voice of He-Man. Close to the production of this commercial, Filmation had finished work on the Shazam series in which Alan Oppenheimer, Linda Gary and Burr Middleton as the voice of the heroic Captain Marvel himself were part of the cast. Interestingly, the commercial uses a piece of music which was a part of Filmation's Black Star series. Once Filmation secured the rights to produce a Master of the Universe animated series, they actually used the animation from the commercial to sell the series at trade shows. Pilots often differ from the final product, and this is most definitely the case when comparing the commercial to the actual show. Naturally, the style of animation seen in this commercial would not have worked across the space of 65 episodes, let alone a 22 minute episode. Even though many of the colour palettes were retained for the series, the character designs were understandably simplified for the series. The animation seen in the commercial itself was edited down from the material that Formation actually produced. This explains why both Beastman and Merman are non-existent once the heroes confront Skeletor and Psycastle Greyskull. It also explains why I personally own pencil artwork and cells from this commercial that do not appear in any of the scenes we see. Sadly, it is doubtful that we will ever see the entirety of Filmation's work on this commercial. To this day, the commercial stroke pilot of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe stands as the beginning of a groundbreaking union between Mattel and Filmation, a union that would change both the face of the toy industry and the animation industry forever. Oh, and just one more thing. Here's Filmation's Castle Grayskull commercial in all its glory. This toy comes with something that can really open up a kid's imagination. Its own legend. He-Man! Skeletor is his enemy. It's the Masters of the Universe collection. And for my kids, the legend begins here, with Castle Grayskull. It holds the powers of the universe. He-Man! Skeletor has captured Castle Grayskull! We must stop his evil power! To Grayskull! Defeat He-Man's forces, but leave him to me. Here I am, Skeletor. He-Man! Skeletor is getting away! But Castle Grayskull is safe with us! Nothing safe while Skeletor is out there. And so the legend continues in this Masters of the Universe collection. And in the imagination of my kids. Look for it. It's new. From Mattel. <laughs> and that is the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next one.